Welcome to Your Bookkeeping Matters. I'm Lisa Turner, bringing you short and snackable weekly episodes on bookkeeping and business matters in an easy to understand way so you can be in control and confident that you know your bookkeeping matters. Let's dive into this week's episode. friends and welcome to a fun episode today. It's a special guest episode where I'm lucky enough to chat with the lovely Hayley Watson from Halley Helper. She's a small business owner, podcast host, content creator and introvert, which to be honest, really surprised me. Today we're chatting about something that is really key to growing your business and that is actually getting out of your own way and by that I mean outsourcing because we so often get stuck down in the day-to-day doing of all the things we end up being our own worst enemy when we're trying to improve and grow. Haley is the owner of her own virtual assistant or VA agency, Hallie Helper. And Hallie Helper looks after admin, social media, graphic work, and loads more. But these are often some of the first things as you start to grow that if you need, you should put your hand up for help and outsource them. I can personally say Haley and the team deliver amazing high touch services completely tailored to your business. When Haley's not on Insta, TikTok or her other passion project, The Girls Gotta Work podcast, you might find her binging RuPaul's Drag Race at the beach or like myself, enjoying a cuppa and a piece of cake. But today we chat about do all virtual assistants do the same thing? Why outsourcing to a VA and the right one is key to growing your business past a certain point. And even what can go wrong if you outsource to the wrong VA, it happens. But along with that, some really helpful tips and insights to make it easier to get out of your own way and outsource those things that you need to and making sure the relationship with your perfect VA goes super smooth. So if you're thinking about engaging a VA but stuck in a revolving door and can't move forward, this is a great episode for you. Hello to you, Hayley. Welcome to your Bookkeeping Matters. I am so glad to have you on the show and chat to you instead of on email as we usually are. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Oh, me too. Me too. The first and most important question I want to dive straight in and ask, I would love to know, do all VAs or virtual assistants do the same things? No. So I am a VA that specializes in a couple of things. Um, I specialize in graphic design, social media, like management and content creation, as well as I call it virtual assisting, but it's like the virtual assisting, like admin realm. So that can cover a lot of things, but every VA is very different. I think you get to niche down and pick the things that you love the most and specialize in that. And that looks different to every VA. So some can be really specific in like website help or like just social media help or podcasting as well. Like there's podcast VAs, there's Anything you kind of think you need, there's probably a VA or someone to outsource to that has that skill set. So it's different. Everyone is different, um, but there is also a lot of overlap that VAs will do a lot of like admin is probably the biggest thing. So a lot of us do that. (laughs) Amazing. So when you say admin, are you talking emails, uh, customer liaison, a bit of everything? or Yeah, a bit of everything. I personally specialize in a lot of like e-commerce stuff. So I can do customer service email, like sales support management, um, like data entry, website backend stuff. But that looks different again to everyone. Some people specialize in data entry, booking meetings, meeting notes, email management, travel as well is something a VA can help with. The sky's the limit, really. (laughs) It's a pretty huge scope that you can work within and support people in. It's no surprise really that you all do different things then because like us small business owners, you can't do 
everything. There's only so many hours in the day. So my next question is kind of tied to that in a way, because you all do those different things and have your own specialties. What have you seen go wrong when small businesses don't work with the right VA for their business? I haven't seen it like firsthand, but I think if you're hiring the wrong VA for the skills that, or not the skills, but the work you need in your business, because their skills are differing, that's where it can go really wrong and like leave you feeling like you're not getting the value that you need from outsourcing. For example, you could hire a virtual assistant and then you say to them, I need help with email management. But then it turns out when they start doing your emails, you don't actually need that help. You needed help with your email marketing back end. And that virtual assistant might not tell you they can't do that or might want to try, but they do it. And then it's sort of up to scratch of what you thought you were like the value you were going to get. So then you stop and you think, oh, I've tried VAing before. It didn't work for me. Like I didn't have the right person. So it's like making sure that you are really specific about what you need help with and you hire accordingly. So really just like any business owners, we have to chat to our potential clients. It's the same thing. If you're outsourcing, make sure you're really clear about what you need help with and making sure the person you're bringing on board is skilled in that area. So just because they're recommended by someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you because each business will have their different requirements and things like that. That's a perfect example because I've heard of emails not going out when they should because there was that miscommunication or it costing more to get things reworked because of that misunderstanding. So there are quite a few things that can go wrong and cost you money and time if you're not working with the right one. So is your take on that or tip to be really crystal clear on the things you need done before you go and get somebody? Definitely. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. I think we were actually talking about that just before we start hit record, but you almost as business owners have to preempt the the help you'll need. So it's very hard, but Think about virtual assisting or think about outsourcing before you hit your overwhelm. So you have the brain space, you have the capacity, you have, yeah, the space to really think about your needs clearer. Whereas when you're hit in that overwhelm and you're just like, I need help yesterday, I'll take anyone, just help me. And then you like offload everything and that virtual assistant is like, "Ah, this isn't what we talked about. And like, you know, I am such a helper. It's in my nature that I would be like, I just want to help any way I can, but doesn't mean I'm the right fit. So when someone's in that overwhelm, don't make big decisions. (laughs) And that's such a great tip for anything in your business. Plan ahead and do make decisions when you're thinking clearly, not under pressure and just going, oh my gosh, I'll just do anything. That's great. I love that. So like any outsourcing, it's really important for a good fit for it to be a successful relationship. Yeah, definitely. So what are some of the key things besides having that clarity that people should do, think or ask when they're ready to work with a VA and take that step to grow their business? What do you chat about in your initial call with people? Yeah, so I like to get clear on what they need help with, what their goals are for their business. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to fully assist with their goals, but understanding The kind of the bigger picture of the business helps me really dive in and be a part of the business. That's a like a value to me. Not every virtual assistant is the same. So understanding, yeah, a business's goals, why they're outsourcing now, if they've outsourced before, because that's always a good indication to know that they've kind of potentially learned how to delegate, because that's really hard too. Um, as businesses, we get stuck and we're like, this is our business, baby. Like it's hard to let go of an aspect of it. So knowing if they've outsourced before, so if they haven't, I like to explain that and say it is a process, like let's write down a list of all the things you hate doing, or just takes you a little longer because what takes you an hour could take me 10 minutes. So it's like having those kind of open discussions about like what they love, what they hate in their business, where they want it to go, because there could be areas there that they haven't realized that a virtual assistant could assist with and also what their day-to-day looks like. Um, Again, every virtual assistant is different, but I like to understand what their day-to-day looks like and where I fit into that, like how much they need me, even if it's that's just like mentally there, like they know that I'm an email away or they're really going to set aside one day a week or 
10 minutes every other day. So understanding what your day-to-day looks like is really important to me. Great. So make sure you've got the clarity of what you want and be ready to outsource and know what times you need people and how much time it's going to take to communicate with that VA. So with that then, what kind of tips or processes do you suggest people use to really get the most out of working with their perfect VA? Yeah, if you're wanting something long term, my biggest tip is to also have not just a discovery call, but once all that like paperwork's out of the way, you're like, yep, this is the VA for me. I want to go forward. A kickoff call, a kickoff call to go again through their goals, um, making sure we're on the same page and setting up any systems you need to either then and there or setting up a new time to go through them. So I think sometimes when people hire virtual assistants, they're like, done, I'm ready. Here's all the things. But we don't always know your processes. We don't always know what programs you're using. We are very diverse, but taking that even just an hour out of your time, even though you feel overwhelmed and busy, that hour to just like explain how this program works, explain what the process is and record it, like write it down. Having that kind of stuff in place from the get go allows you to grow together and have longevity of a good working relationship because both parties know what's going on and that way you're not going back and forth with emails which can take longer setting up that short-term loss for long-term gain kind of thing so like setting aside that extra hour to just really go through the processes on both sides um, and making sure you're on the same page is really valuable because then you're getting the most out of both both parties are getting the most out work done as possibly can Great. I love that, that you've said to record things because that's so much more clearer than written instructions. Sometimes it can be less misunderstood or different interpretations. And you know, you can uh, record it once and they can refer to it as many times as they like. So have your processes ready, I would say, from the sound of it as well. Like if you have a certain way of doing things, make sure you have that ready to hand over would be important. And communication. Do you all use or love a particular software? Are there things that are helpful with that communication process? I think both sides depends how flexible you can be. I love an app called Voxer. It's like a walkie talkie app and you can like text through it. You can voice note through it. I love a voice note because I can just like ramble out my thoughts and have it rambled back to me over an e- like a long email. But that's personally my preference being clear on how both parties communicate because that's different for everyone and setting those boundaries about communication as well. Like if you don't want calls after five o'clock or you don't want to use your personal mobile phone at all, that's why I use things like Voxer because I'm allowed to like leave memos, leave text messages. And you know it's not interrupting anywhere. They'll just check it when they're ready. Yeah. 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 That communication is so important, but making sure it fits both parties. Oh, amazing. I love that because, yeah, it has to fit and work for both of you. And my last big question then, tying all that together, why do you think outsourcing to the right people is key to growing your business? Because that's what this season two of the podcast is all about, taking that next step and growing. Outsourcing correctly and outsourcing the things that you're just not good at. Like it's so disheartening when I see business women or business owners trying to do everything they possibly can themselves. I mean, there's probably unicorns out there that can do that. I don't know. I haven't met one, but you just can't do it all yourself. And how are you meant to grow in the areas that you love in your business? If you're focusing on like tedious tasks that one, you might hate what like two, you just are not good at it. You don't have to be good at everything. So outsourcing is so important to be able to grow and have clarity in your brain because you don't have to think about those a hundred other things you need to do because someone else is looking after it for you. So having the trust in that is so important. So that's why having the right person is valuable because then you can switch off that task and you don't have to think about it because you don't have to hold that brain space anymore. Yeah. Cause your trust and faith is in your, your person you've outsourced to that you just know it's going to get done. So yeah, it takes a little while to 
create that trust sometimes, um, but it's so worth it in the end so that you can grow your business to where you need it to be. Focus on your revenue generating or planning for the next year or whatever it might be. I'm the same as you. I can't stress how important it is to outsource things. And if you don't, that's okay. But we're talking about growing your business in this season. So outsourcing is something you kind of have to do if you want to grow. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that you've got to that point that you are looking for extra help. Because I know some people I've had feedback from, oh, I don't really want to hire a VA because then it looks like I can't do the things. And I say, but it's about time management and better spending your time where your best value is. And like, no one cares. No exactly. one cares that you're outsourcing. No, no one cares. <laughs> We're going to celebrate any kind of win you have in your business and getting to hire someone is a huge win. Getting to grow your business is also a huge win. And should be celebrated. And just back on something you mentioned that no one cares, I would also say a lot of the time people don't know because you guys are such an integral part of the team. They don't realize it's outsourced or someone else is doing that stuff. So you shouldn't get hung up on it. It's about growing your business and it's helpful. We can be scapegoats too. Like if something's not going right and you don't want to tell your client, just like, oh, my virtual assistant made a mistake. Like, <laughs> like we can help in so many other ways. <laughs> oh, dear me. Like I said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you wanting to outsource. And on the flip side, nothing wrong with wanting to stay solo because there are so many successful businesses that do. But if you do want to grow past that point, this is a really important step to take and celebrate. Amazing. I love all that so much. It's been really helpful because there's a few things that I've even learned from you today and I speak with you all the time. <laughs> I've got two really quick questions to finish off our chat. The first one, please share one tip that makes your finances easier for you. I mean, this is going to be a surprise. Not really. Um, outsource. <laughs> <laughs> I never like to say I'm not good at anything, but I'm just never going to care enough about numbers to really want to do it myself. So I outsource from the get-go. I'm, I'm just, just outsource it. <laughs> I love that. Aside from outsourcing, is there any little things that you do um, or get or think about that make things easier for you in terms of um, keeping track of your expenses? Does that help you or is there a particular thing that is really important to you? Understanding enough because when I started, I was like, oh, I'm so scared of the numbers. I didn't educate myself enough. So I think getting a sound understanding of numbers and what you need to know as business owners, like profit, loss, GST, tax, like getting an understanding on that is really important. And then setting it up from the start as well as like your bank accounts as well and managing it that way. Great. I love that you said that, bank accounts and getting familiar with the things that are important to you so they're not overwhelming. Last one. What do you wish you did differently with your numbers in the very early days of your business? Yeah, setting up the bank accounts properly from the get-go uh, <laughs> was yes. a big one. <laughs> I have only just done that recently, but I wish I'd done that straight away from the start. For those who aren't familiar with what we're talking about, make sure you have a separate business bank account and you are not mixing personal with business and yeah. Yeah. So that took me a little while to manage that a little bit better. So that's probably my biggest takeaway was would be to do that from the start. I love that because it's such a classic case of you don't know what you don't know. And I'm always banging on about get a separate business bank account. So that's something I'm really passionate about making sure people do. So I love that that's your thing that you wish differently. So thank you very much, Hayley, for joining me. I always love chatting with you. So anyone listening can also catch up with you. Where is the best place to connect? Um, so I am on Instagram and TikTok at Hallie Helper. And yeah, that's my handle. That's my website. So yeah, come find me on Instagram and hang out. Brilliant. I shall, of course, link that and other ways you can find Hayley in the show notes. 
You might even be ready after listening today to dive in and work with a fantastic VA like Hayley. Thanks for popping us in your ears today. That wraps up today's matter of outsourcing to virtual assistants and why it really matters to find the right one. If you found this helpful, please dive over and leave a review so that this will reach more small business owners to help them grow. I can't wait to catch you in the next episode of Your Bookkeeping Matters.